Welcome to the Ampex VR 1200B Level 3 Restore and Adjust. This is Part 4. Our broken wires here for the power to the fans. Uh, there was no strain relief uh, for some reason, so I uh, added this little strain relief, so hopefully those wires won't pull out again. So let's see if it's going to work. Got it all hooked up. Let's plug it in and listen. Seems good. Okay, I'm going to turn on the machine here and just check for some various things like the brakes and the lights and uh, things like that. Uh, those five lamps over there don't look too good. Two of them are burned out. Let's check the power supplies individually in each component. It should be 12 volts, and uh, the plus and the minus should be within uh, a quarter of a volt. And here I've got them within a hundredth of a volt, so that looks pretty good. So shove that back in. Let's check that. Let's check the other ones. By the way, just uh, looking at the machine, how many circuit boards do we have here? Well, there's 14 in the signal system and 12 in the uh, uh, intersync servo, uh, 12 more in the uh, color tech, uh, 12 in the uh, Amtech, uh, 17 in the proc amp, 16 in the Valcomp, and 15 circuit breakers down below, but there are 83 cards in a 1200B. Okay, let's look at the signal system. I'll connect uh, video directly to the output of the signal system, so I'm just looking at that portion of the machine. And uh, four cards were bad in that section, and we had still a problem with the uh, uh, demodulator. Uh, you can see here as we apply power to the machine, that card is slowly coming to life. There were some bad capacitors and bad transistors on that card. As you see, it's warming up. It's slowly coming to life. This is real time. I didn't speed this up at all. So obviously, that, uh, that picture is not acceptable. And uh, we've got to find out uh, which one of those cards has the problem. And I traced it down to the DMOD. So in order to check out the card, we need the extender card, uh, which of course plugs into the machine. And then the uh, questionable card plugs into the extender. So now you can work and measure uh, the various components on the card. So let's turn the machine back on and do some uh, quick freeze spray on that transistor there. And uh, what does that do to the picture if I touch it there? Yeah, that uh, doesn't look like it's supposed to. So, we've replaced that, and the uh, picture looks pretty good. Now let's plug into the Amtech, which is the next process in the signal flow. And there's the output connector there. Uh, so we'll go into the Amtech, and the next thing we'll do is check the color tech. The next one we'll check is the proc amp, and the last one we'll check is the Valcomp velocity compensator. As you see, the uh, modules pull out, so it's easy to get to the cards and then push back in and there's a magnetic catch that uh, catches the tray. Well, this is through the final machine, through everything. And it doesn't look too bad. Obviously the chroma is a bit low, so I've got to find out where that is and make adjustments there. But you can see the picture doesn't look too bad. Uh, let's get to some mechanical parts. Here's the pinch roller. and Let me take off this clip. Of course that clip is 30 years old and it breaks when I take it off. But that's not a problem because, uh, fortunately, I have a bag with several of, uh, of uh, new clips in it. Uh, here's the uh, pinch roller with the bearings taken out, and you can see those clips to hold the bearings in place. Uh, this was the old one. And I was lucky enough to have a brand new pinch roller uh, that's never been used. And there it is. It's even uh, in a little bag. So now we have to put the clip in there and then the, uh, the bearings. And those clips are hard to get out. 
but you keep playing with them and you can finally get them out. Here's a bearing. We're going to put that into the uh, uh, the new pinch roller. It's, uh, it's a tight fit, so I usually heat up the pinch roller in the sun and put the bearing in the freezer, so there's a little bit of a difference in, uh, in size. Uh, it goes in a little bit easier if I press down on it completely. And now I've got the two bearings in and we're ready to install it. These bearings used to be pretty expensive, but now with the skateboard craze, you can get them pretty cheap. Uh, this is how you put it all back together again with the various spacers and uh, wavy washers and clips. And here is the completed pinch roller. That's the wavy washer on the back. And this is where it is installed on the machine, uh, that uh, arm right there with the two holes for the screws. A little bit difficult to get to because the pinch roller is in the way, but uh, you can uh, maneuver the uh, tool just a bit and uh, get it to bite in. So the top was connected and then we'll uh, connect the bottom. And after we get it nice and tight, uh, yep. Looks pretty good. Of course, we have to do the measurements for the actual force of the uh, pinch roller, and that's a whole other thing. Uh, this particular unit here has a bad power cable. Uh, after 30 years, it uh, just started to disintegrate. So I'll uh, remove it from the machine. A lot of connections on the back, and I uh, forgot to take one of them off. So there you can see the, uh, <laughs> that's not good, whenever you can see the, the bare wire uh, through the insulation. Uh, that was the old, this is the new, after it's all been finished and uh, soldered together. Uh, and then we put it back into the machine and connect all those connectors, and that's where the uh, cables go up through that hole. Uh, I'm going to send the uh, power uh, connector through the hole and put a... Uh, power plug on it. This is to feed the monitors in that section of the machine. And here's a modification to the uh, switch covers. The one on the left has been drawled out so it's larger. The original is on the right. That was so I could use a, a larger switch. The smaller ones are not available anymore. Here's the power plug for the 1200. I had to make that because the old stuff was uh, a bit worn out. And listen to this noise here. You won't hear this very often. Now those are the video heads grinding because the automatic shutoff didn't prevent the heads from spinning with no air. So we've got to figure out how to repair that in the next version of Repair and Restore. See you on part five.